Good day everybody. Once again we are back together. It's been a little bit of a while. Uh, I just took some time off of course uh, you know to get myself refreshed and we are back again. Uh, welcome to those of you who are new to our channel. Please uh, just hit that subscribe button okay and uh, make sure that you please uh, like and share lesson uh, immediately after and of course uh, you can always hit that uh, notification bell as well just to notify you every time that we are posting a new lesson and of course i know that uh, most of you are working quite hard making sure that you're preparing towards those exams uh, be it uh, your may june exams or even you know your mid-year exams uh, those are coming up and of course uh, will continue to be your plug when it comes to maths and science content all right uh, so um i want to just continue today on calculus uh, and in this case, we are going to be looking at the applications of calculus. And of course, those are word sums. And usually you, you guys find them a little bit daunting. Uh, but of course, we'll always try to make it as simple as possible uh, for you to understand. All right. Now, let's start with our first example for today. Uh, and it involves a little bit of physical science. But of course, we have to apply calculus into it. Right. So the problem says the displacement... Uh, of a moving object is described by the following equation. Okay, so they've given us an equation there, and this equation actually describes the displacement. So what I want to do quickly is just to make sure that I highlight that equation so that we can see it. So that uh, that's S, uh, which is a function of T. Uh, it's equals to 10T minus T squared. Uh, they say where S represents the displacement in meters and t is time in seconds all right so remember displacement is a function of time now let's look at the first question they say determine the displacement after two seconds now i want you to think about it remember what represents displacement is that function there s of t right and t is time in seconds so what are they actually saying they're saying simply find okay uh, s of 2 right so which means that we're going to uh, um, substitute 2 everywhere where we see s in this case i mean uh, t rather uh, so in this case we're going to have 10 multiplied by 2 minus uh, 2 squared okay all right i'm just going to make sure that i uh, write the right thing uh, so that we make sure that we always have what we have there. All right, so uh, in this case, this is 10 times 2 minus uh, 2 squared. And of course, what will this give us? Uh, that would be 20 minus 4, and this would be equal to 16. But remember, you're not just giving a, an answer here uh, in units. You know what the units are because they did say uh, displacement is represented in meters. So this would obviously be 16 meters okay right so uh, let's go on to the next question they say what time will it take for the uh, for the object to reach maximum displacement now i want you to always uh, remember every time you want to maximize or minimize you always will take the derivative in this case remember when we took uh, you know the cubic function uh, at those, uh, um, uh, you you know, we, we call them uh, 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 stationary points. Yeah, the, mix, the, the maximum and the minimum values. At those maximum and minimum values, we know that the derivative is equal to zero. So every time they ask you to maximize or minimize something, so remember that we're going to take the derivative and make it equal to zero. Now, remember our original equation is S of T which is equal to 10t minus t squared. So when we take the derivative, what is that going to be? It's going to be 10 minus 2t. But what do we do? We take the derivative and make it equal to 0. And what do we have? 10 minus 2t is equal to 0. And so we know that uh, if we take uh, uh, 10 to the other side, we have minus 2t okay which is equal to negative 10 and of course if we divide both sides by negative 2 
uh, that cancels with that and so we have five but remember t represents seconds so that means that we will have the maximum uh, uh, in this case displacement at five seconds all right now the next question they say to us determine uh, the velocity uh, after three seconds now uh, this one could be slightly tricky uh, because uh, in this case, we're not really sure they were talking about displacement, but now they're talking about velocity. Now, for those of you who know, uh, you know, a little bit of physics, you know that uh, velocity is the rate of change in displacement. What does that mean? It means that uh, uh, velocity, you know, if you have a displacement graph, the gradient under a displacement graph would be velocity, right? So what is this actually asking us? It's telling us, well, find the derivative where time is equal to three. So what we do is remember our original equation. That's 10t minus t squared, right? So now I'm going to find the derivative, right? And say, well, what is my derivative in this case? That's going to be 10 minus 2t. But now we're not just looking for the derivative. We're looking for the derivative where time is equal to 3, right? Because remember, the derivative of displacement is velocity. Okay, so this now will be uh, 10 minus 2 times 3. Okay, so at this point, we know that this will give us uh, 10 minus 6 and that will be 4 right uh, and uh, by the way this is the units uh, of displacement in this case of velocity rather uh, would be meters per second okay so whether you want to write it out in full meters per second like that or of course for those of you who know a little bit of physics uh, you would say meters per second in that way, right? And so remember, every time that they're telling us about displacement, when we want velocity, we take the gradient, okay? Now, the next question, quite important, they say to us, determine the acceleration. Now, remember, we said uh, we've got a, an equation that represents uh, displacement, 10t minus uh, t squared, okay? So that's minus t squared over there. But now I want you to think about it. We know when we take the derivative, this gives us the velocity, isn't it? So that's 10 minus 2t. But I want you to please note now the second derivative in this case. This now gives us the acceleration, okay? And they also want to know, is it going faster? Now, let's find the second derivative. So we know second derivative, that becomes, uh, uh, the constant becomes zero. And that would basically be negative two, right? So remember, the second derivative now represents the acceleration, okay? First derivative, velocity. Second derivative, acceleration. And so it means that our acceleration is going to be negative two, uh, meters per second squared. Now they want to know, is it going faster or slower? Remember that when acceleration is positive, then we know that it is positive. Acceleration is essentially uh, something that's moving faster and faster, uh, but negative acceleration means that something is slowing down. Okay, the rate of change of velocity is decreasing. So in this case, it means that uh, this is going slower, okay? So, and that is how you would sort of uh, tackle such a question. Please look out for these questions. Uh, they're quite nice uh, for exam applications. Um, of course, I took this from a past exam question paper, right? Uh, always look out for, you know, how to tackle them, uh, you know, uh, um, when it comes to uh, relating physical science and you know, mathematics, calculus in particular. Otherwise, well, I'll leave this for now. I'm going to do another question on the application in our next, uh, um, you know, episode. So I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.